360 Strong Women. Today, we're going to celebrate mental health awareness by doing some restorative yoga and some breathing techniques. And if you haven't already, hit our button, like, subscribe, and share. And you can go into our mindful playlist and learn about a lot of these breathing techniques that are going to be overall good for your whole person wellness, meaning your mental health and your physical health. It's, it's a combination, right? We want to learn how to strengthen our pulmonary system by breathing appropriately. And we want to be able to incorporate a lot of oxygen into our body so that when we move, because we have to move every day, we can move appropriately because we have the right amount of oxygen in our body. So that's one, physical. We want to be able to lower our stress hormones. And I wouldn't call them bad hormones. They're just hormones that are supposed to make us alive and awake, make us be able to have reaction time if we need it, or to what? Fight or flight, or what now we call befriend, because most of us sit in a chronic state. Take an example of cortisol. So cortisol is meant to get us up and moving, make us react, make us um, alert. It's one of those hormones that, you know, gets us moving and going. So for instance, when you wake up in the morning, you get a little spike of cortisol. That's like, wake up, get that metabolism going, let's go. It's time to start the day. And then, so it starts to do this. And then it should level out as we go through the day. So by the time we're going to bed, it's dipping back down. Our melatonin is coming into play, making us sleepy, making us more relaxed, making us ready to restore our body. But because a lot of us live in um, a stressful state, we don't restore our body. So if you're living in a, what I call not an acute sense of stress, so stress is good, it alerts you to things, but acute meaning it happens and then you can manage it and then move on with your day. We mostly live in what we call a chronic state. It's chronic um, stress. And so our cortisol levels they go up and they stay up instead of coming back down and um, so that we're able to start to restore the body. So our body never goes into that relaxed, unstressful state. It's always up here. We're always heightened. We're always stressed. We're frazzled. Then we don't sleep well. So now we're on this big hamster wheel of not having enough sleep and therefore maybe feeling so stressed that we have monkey brain or brain fog. And a lot of this has to do with, you know, our hormones are just all over the place. So they're not um, balancing out the ebb and flow because hormones move up and down all the time. It's not like they stay static. However, they're not moving like they're supposed to. They're moving up, they're staying high. And we need to do some things to alleviate some of that stress and so breathing properly and doing some of these breathing techniques can really help our mental state reduce our cortisol reduce our stress hormones cortisol is not the only one reduce some of those back to its natural ebb and flow where it should be and so we feel like we have focus we don't have monkey brain we're not frazzled we're not feeling like we're living always in a state of chaos. It suggests that for mental health, we need to practice these breathing techniques and then we're gonna do a nice restorative yoga practice. Restorative yoga is doing something. So a lot of people will say to me, Beth, you're just like, you're just taking a nap. You're breathing and yes, you're restoring. But what we're doing is bringing our body from sympathetic system up, moving, doing, doing, and taking it down to a parasympathetic nervous system where we start to restore our body. 
our muscles start to restore after all that work we did. Our ligaments and tendons, our organs, our digestion, it all starts to calm down and restore. And most important, we start to restore our brain. There's a lot of evidence out there that we need this restoration. Um, and this is a good practice to do, one, when you're really stressed, two, before you go to bed. So you can begin that restorative system and then you'll sleep better at night. So consider taking restorative yoga and making it part of your sleep ritual. So you're gonna to begin to do the restorative yoga before you go to bed so that you can restore, I, I call it like a little power wash for your brain. And it really helps uh, rejuvenate the brain and your organs and your digestion and every system that is in your body um, has to go through some restorative work. It's just like we maintain our cars, our vehicles, we maintain our house. We don't let it go into disarray but we let our bodies do that. And so I would suggest that we need to add these practices to our body. It's not doing nothing. It's actually really doing something. And I would also suggest if you're like me and you um, move all day long, you're busy, you like power yoga, you like to lift, you like to do those things, that's fine, but we need to do them and we need to do the restorative stuff. And I found, what I found, so just to share with you, was when I started to practice restorative yoga, it was very difficult because it was hard to relax and sit still. So it takes practice. Stick with it. Eventually you'll be like, oh, that's what it does to my body. Where has this been all my life? I'm going to start doing this all the time. And then you'll start to look forward to restorative yoga and look forward to getting this practice in. Restorative yoga is not hip stretching. That's hip stretching. That's hip mobility. It's gentle stretch. Restorative yoga is different from yin. It's different from vinyasa. And it's different from... Um, hip openers. So it's restorative yoga is not a hip opening practice. Just to be clear on that, it's different and we're going to do it today. So the first thing I want to teach you, and I'm sitting on my mat, but I'm also sitting on my yoga blanket because I want extra comfort, extra cushion on my sits bone. You could do this whole thing in your pajamas, get a nice cup of green tea, add some lemon to it, or get some chamomile tea or some lavender tea, something that's going to relax you, be antioxidant and herbal, so it's decaffeinated, so it's not gonna keep you up, it's relaxing. Get aromatherapy in here, you could put out a candle, you could make this a dark practice. We're not doing that today because I'm instructing you, but. You're in your pajamas, you've got your blanket. You can get a bunch of pillows, couch pillows. You can use your bolsters um, and put them all around you and surround yourself with blankets and pillows for this practice. I didn't do that today because I wanted you to be able to see what I'm doing. But consider that when you're actually doing your restorative yoga, you can just like, put pillows all up under you and close to you and just like snuggle yourself into this big um, pile of pillows in your pajamas. So this isn't, this isn't not the type of yoga that you're going to be moving, right? It's still. I'm also going to use, I've got this little tuffet here or this little step stool. You could use a chair, just make sure it doesn't have wheels so it's not moving. You could use um, stacked bolsters. You could use stacked pillows. We're going to do astronauts pose as part of, as one of the practices. So we elevate our legs for really good reverse blood flow and oxygen. It's really comforting. Um, so we're going to use that. And that's why this is here. 
What we want to do first is box breathing. So I'm seated on my sits bone in a nice sukhasana, an easy seated pose. I'm going to take a sip of my tea. I'm going to pull the pit of the belly in and up and roll my shoulders back. Keep my apple under my chin. Remember, same thing goes with all fitness, all movement, all non-movement. We want to not drop our head below our heart because it's going to make us dizzy. And we want to keep our neck safe, our cervical spine, our, our C1 through 7, nice and safe and sturdy. We want to keep it in neutral position. And I want to make sure that my head's sitting over my shoulders and not out here. I'm not leaning over. I'm tapped in and here. And I've rolled my shoulders back and I'm holding my body up really nice and tight. I'm not rounding out and dumping out here. Now I want to visualize a square. You can put your hands in your lap and close your eyes. Just do that. And then just begin to breathe in and out gently. I'm going to use my hand as the block so that, as the square, so that uh, it gives you a visualization if you're just learning. And we're going to start with a two count. So it's going to be an inhale for two. You're going to hold your breath for two. You're going to exhale for two. And then you're going to hold your breath again for two. Box breathing is a great way to bring yourself back into parasympathetic nervous system, reduce stress, and it helps you with focus. So if you're a person that's struggling with this monkey brain or focus, then box breathing is something that you can do. So it's a two count, inhale, hold the breath, exhale, hold the breath. Now let's go to a three count, inhale, hold the breath, exhale, hold your breath, inhale, Hold, exhale, hold. Now let's go to a four count. Inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Then sweep your arms up, big breath. As you exhale, Exhale it out of your mouth. <sighs> Get rid of it. That should feel good. You can take your shoulders up, down, forward, and back. Now, if you need to put extension into your legs, you can do that as well. Box breathing, keep practicing. I'm up to around a 10 count. When I have a good amount of oxygen in my body and I'm feeling pretty good, I'm not congested, um, I don't have allergies going on. I can go all the way up 10, hold 10, all the way down 10, hold 10. Now you may find, interestingly enough, it's harder to take in oxygen than it is to exhale oxygen. So if you're one of those people that it's hard to get all that oxygen in, you want to strengthen those lungs, open up those lobes, and fill it up. So practice. What you don't want to do is I feel dizzy when I do that. So practice to count first. When that becomes easy and you don't have any sensations and you're used to it, then move to three. So move slowly through. This is a lifelong practice. And then see how good your pulmonary system gets. It feels good when you have a lot of oxygen in your body. It's great for your brain. And oh my goodness, it relaxes you and keeps you laser focused. So box breathing for mental health and for physical health. We want to be doing these breathing exercises. So that's our box breathing for today. Now we're gonna go ahead and do restorative yoga. And I'm going to do a couple different poses. So to get into parasympathetic nervous system, you really need about 20 minutes. Yes, I said that correctly, 20 minutes. And so we're going to do 
couple different poses to start in our astronaut pose. So put a blanket on you, get cozy. That's what restorative is about. Making your body feel relaxed. So you just put pillows up under your head. I just want to show you what it looks like without all the stuff around me. Now, if I were doing my restorative yoga, I'd have my arms like propped in these soft pillows. Or maybe I would prop up my head a little bit more comfortable and just kind of hang out. But for astronaut pose, Notice that my hips come up towards my knees, like they're stacked. And then I'm just going to rest my feet over the top. So it's kind of like waterfall, but now I have support. So I've just supported it. Now if I need extra blankets underneath your back, like if you have space under here, if you have a little bit of spinal stenosis, scoliosis, you have curvature in your spine and your back lifts up, put extra pillows and blankets to support yourself. I have an apple under my chin. I'm going to roll my shoulders back and then all I'm going to do is put my palms out. So take a big breath in. Close your eyes and just breathe. Relax. Now thinking about your to-do list. Just connect your breath to your body. Fall into a state of relaxation. Focus on your breath. Or perhaps you're seeing color right between your eyes. Focus on the color. Perhaps it changes.
want you to start to wiggle your toes and your fingers. Gently begin to open your eyes. Take in a breath. Exhale it away. Gently come up. <clears throat> Keep your apple under your chin. Move gently and slowly. We're going to move into our next position, prone position, so you'll know what to do there. I'm going to use my bolster again. You can use blocks and pillows, and I have a blanket. I'm going to push the blanket right up against me. I'm going to put a block on either side of me just so that I've got support. And I'm going to just lean right over it like I'm going to do a child's pose, but I'm going to turn my head gently and put my arms right up on the block so that they're supported and they're not hanging. Take a breath in, close your eyes, and breathe in and out. Continue the restoration. Just find where you're supported at. If this is more comfortable to put your arms down at your side, you can do that too. I just don't want you to dump too much here.
begins taking big breath. Gently move the blocks out of the way. Perhaps you need to lift up into the tabletop for a nice cat cow. Just an extension into that spine. Come back into your seated position. Oh, that was great. And it goes fast. And when I first started uh, restorative yoga, I would be counting down those minutes like, when is my timer going to go off? And now it's like, wow, that was really quick. But your body feels so good. So we need at least 20 minutes. And you could break it up into a few different poses. We just did two today. One supine, our astronaut pose, and one pro our child's pose. And I just added the bolsters, but again, you can add lots and lots of pillows. One pose and do all 20 minutes. So that's up to you. I just like to move people into prone and supine because it changes the way you breathe and changes the way your heart activates. So take that big breath out. Exhale that all away. Bring your hands to heart center. Thumb knuckles touch your heart. Breath in, exhale out, and then take your thumb knuckle, and then take your thumb knuckles up to your forehead center. May the love and the light in me always honor, see, and appreciate the love and the light in each of you. And then bow. Namaste. You have done a restorative practice and learned some box breathing for Mental Health Day. Don't forget, it helps Stress levels helps your mental health, but also helps your physical health. And we want to incorporate these kinds of things into our whole person wellness. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. Leave me comments below. Keep them kind, please. But leave me comments below if you have questions about restorative yoga or box breathing or other breathing techniques. There are some out there. So um, box breathing isn't for everyone because of I get dizzy when I hold my breath. Um, consider just starting very small and working up to it. But you could just take in big breaths and exhale out in through the nose, exhale out through the mouth. That's another way of just big deep breaths in and out to relax you just take the time most of the time when we're talking and we're going throughout our day we do very shallow breathing we're not using all of our pulmonary system and we need to learn how to strengthen our pulmon we need to learn how to strengthen our pulmonary system and use those lungs so have a great day and don't forget just because you've done something that was really relaxing doesn't mean we don't get to hydrate. So hydrate your body, eight, eight ounces of water every day. I will see you for the next video. Bye.